Hi everyone, Forced in the Hand Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this Animal Collective album, Time Skiffs. The game-changing Neo Psych outfit is back. Their 11th studio album with the full lineup, A.B. Tear, Panda Bear, Geologist, Deacon, they're all here in the mix. The last time they were all together on a new formal album was a 2012 Centipede Hurts 10 years ago, which many see as Animal Collective's somewhat underwhelming follow-up to their commercial peak with 2009's Meriwether Post Pavilion, which saw the group reaching new levels of pop appeal. But Animal Collective isn't, nor have they ever been, just some pop band. Band. So I imagine the exposure and the expectations that Meriwether sort of set were tough to follow up. Personally, I think this record's got a lot of heart, a lot of fury and surrealist sonics, but the cluttered grading and maxed out mixes just aren't as gratifying as the bright open popscapes that uh, their previous record brought. Then Painting With in 2016 didn't offer much of a bounce back either. The track list did bring some interesting songs to the table, but very few of them translated through the gummy layers of synths and effects and all the mind numbingly repetitive beats. So considering Animal Collective showing over the last decade, I didn't go into this record with the highest hopes. I wasn't even that crazy about the first taste of the record Prester John, which I didn't find underwhelming because of any sort of kookiness or uh, cloudiness. The track sounded like, and still sounds like to my ears, a very nondescript indie psych jam that is, yes, listenable, but for Animal Collective, weirdly obvious. Sure, the drums, synths, and guitars have uh, serious clarity to them, but the magic and mystery that the group typically brings to any given track or record just wasn't really here. But in a way that's more or less the vibe of Time Skiffs. This is not a record of tightly wound, lasagna-layered cacophonies. Time Skiffs is more of a slow burner through and through. This time, I think Animal Collective offers more breathing room, more space, more immersion. This thing isn't instantly catchy, nor is it really trying to smother. So, as a result, I think many of these tracks truly sink or swim on the merits of their songwriting alone, which is not a bad thing. The watery and meditative grooves that kick off the intro track, Dragon Slayer, are a mildly curious and sweet on the ears. The pre-chorus brings some great glittery rushes of instrumentation, eventually breaking into uh, some really solid hook vocals. Hold them hard to see, hard to see, hear the sea goes. It's a pretty strong opener to the record. I enjoy the song Car Keys afterwards even more. With its Brian Wilson-esque vocal harmonies and percussive instrumentation that uh, sounds like the theme to any given jungle level on a rareware video game. But to me, this track is a perfect example of finding a balance between uh, the more organic performance style Animal Collective wants to indulge in on this record, but also bringing some eclectic music and sounds. The extended instrumental outro was a nice touch too. But the vaguely foreign vibes on this LP occasionally lead into some very annoying and out of touch exotica. Large portions of Strung With Everything, for example, sound like a sunburnt boomer island vacation soaked in LSD, though the aggressive performance from A.V. Tear in the final leg does call back to the explosivity of earlier releases like Strawberry Jam. The song Walker runs like more easygoing, droney psych pastiche, whose clunky xylophone bits don't really sync up with the backing instrumentation they're supposed to be complimenting. The respect to Panda Bear for penning a genuinely heartfelt Scott Walker tribute on this song, saying, I wanted just for you to know, appreciate you, cannot wait, we'll see you out there, we'll see you there. Now, the second half of the LP overall I thought was a bit stronger than the first. Cherokee Key is the longest piece on this entire record by a minute or so, and for good reason. It's easily the most immersive track here. I love the gentle, shy bits of synthesizer, the sparse beats, and A.B. Tear's voice singing like it's uh, stuck in my head, telling me of these experiences and locations in North Carolina. The bold rush of instrumentation the entire track builds up to is great as well. Sure, it's not the snappiest song on the LP, but it is enchanting and mesmerizing for days. Then Passerby is maybe one of the most cogent and dreamlike stories uh, that's been told in any Animal Collective track, with lyrics about these quick connections and interactions being made with passers-by. There's then a past here that's being contrasted with a present where all of these people are uh, sort of missed. Maybe it's an expression of uh, isolation in the modern day. That being said, I'm not as enamored with the music of the track as much as I am the emotion in uh, the lyrics being expressed. Then the song We Go Back is kind of a fun 
one. Peppier groove, faster pacing, more colorful vocal layers, and even little dashes of auto-tune here and there that add quite a bit of character to the whole thing. There are some spooky-ooky synth lines <laughs> in the mix as well, a uh, generally catchy chorus. If you're looking for a more straightforward highlight on the record, this is the one. Uh, then the closing track is a straight-up Deacon ballad. The lush layers and sloshy grooves on this one are fantastic. It feels like being carried out on a stretcher of pink clouds. Deacon's vocal performance is good too and shines through the hazy mix. Overall, while I'm not in love with this record, this is the most enjoyable I've found a new Anko record to be in years. The jammy, linear, and more hypnotic direction the instrumentation takes on this one I think was a nice choice for the band. Having everyone in the mix undoubtedly uh, made the process of making the record in this way better. There are some spots where I think the instrumentation isn't as sharply composed, produced, or performed as it could have been, but I still found a majority of the tracks here to be pretty great. Feeling a light to decent seven on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Animal Collective, forever.